Hello everybody, this is the big trend. Boy howdy, doesn't this location just screams out Stanley Kubrick? So we are going to take a look at today what is, I would say, technically the debut film of Stanley Kubrick. Technically, Killer's Kiss was his first, but there is a debate going on whether or not that would count or not. But today we're going to take a look at his noir masterpiece, The Killing. is going to rob a racetrack and he has put together a team of uh, people who normally just move in the criminal circle so they're not known by the police or stuff like that so they should be easier for them to get away and not get busted or something like that and um, this movie is a lot of preparations because we don't know exactly how they are going to you know rob the thing because it is a lot of planning going around talking to people and just planning 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 the gang however has a small bit of a problem without knowing it because one of the members of the gang is a weak milk soap whose wife is a conniving, scheming, manipulating, backstabbing cunt who is about as trustworthy as a McMahon during the Attitude Era. So is she going to single-handedly cost the entire thing to just go boom and no one's gonna get a single dime from this one? Or are some of them gonna get away with money? Or is everybody gonna go you know, scot-free with this one? We shall see. Uh, this movie is so, so focused. There isn't a scrap of fat on the killing. The thing is that it is just preparation and then the heist. And they are able to squeeze this thing into 84 minutes. This will, however, come back to haunt this movie in a way which I will explain in a minute. But first, let's just talk about how fucking tight this script is. With razor sharp dialogues, with a lot of side characters but no side plots, this movie is so damn focused. This movie is all business and we're just focusing on the heist, we're just focusing on the guys, and we're also focusing what potentially could go wrong, aka that fucking bitch. But regardless of that, this movie is all business and I love it. This movie came out a couple of years after uh, the demand for film noir had kind of died down, but um, this movie is still a, an absolute powerhouse of storytelling, emotions and tough guys and uh, stuff like that, which I am a big sucker for. The thing is that um, this is one of my favorite film noir movies of all time. Not the, not the best one, not the best one, but one of the top five, I would say. It is not one of Kubrick's best movies, but that is just a measure of how fucking good Kubrick is. If you want to see a great film noir movie, and if you're curious of one of the earlier uh, movies of uh, Stanley Kubrick, this is a great movie to see. I'm really, really fond of this movie, and I have great memories of watching it a couple of times, and I never get tired of it. This movie has some minor problems that will show up in the ending, but like the, the, the last 10 minutes of this movie has stories that could have fitted into a half an hour segment. Maybe they could have taken a little bit of the planning and preparation stages and put it into the aftermath and post-heist uh, sequence of the movie. Because it feels a little bit rushed. And the ending, I always thought, was a little bit... But why are they... Uh, couldn't they just have... Uh, maybe it's something I'm missing, but I, I don't know. The thing is that the movie may, might be a little bit too short for its own good. And I think that with a slightly, you know, reshuffled structure, you could have ended up with an even better movie. But I am also a big sucker for voiceovers. I think voiceovers are so cool. And this just might be the movie that almost got you thinking, well, this is a little excessive because this movie is just filled top to bottom with super hardcore tough guy a uh, voiceover about how many days have passed since so and so happened and uh, what a guy is thinking what uh, a guy is doing we see what he's doing and we kind of know what he's thinking it's a little bit over the top even for a voiceover fanatic like me but i still think it was very fun and very entertaining the killing is a bit of a forgotten classic that has never truly got the attention that other kubrick movies have gotten i think personally 
that uh, it is one of Kubrick's very, very solid movies, but uh, not one of his absolute best, but it is still a very, very fun and very, very good and very well made uh, movie with razor sharp direction and absolutely amazing dialogue. Considering this movie was made in the 1950s, this movie has an incredibly fast pace and things are happening all the time. I give this movie 83 points. It is an incredibly cool movie. It is an unironically tough and hard and cool movie. If you have never seen this one before, I really recommend it. If you are a little bit allergic to the whole thing with, you know, film noirs, after you've seen this, you probably say, well, I thought this movie was pretty damn good, actually. Pretty good acting and a very solid soundtrack, even though the ending is a little bit abrupt. But hey, what you gonna do? So I'll see you next time from Well So and So Reviewing Well Such and Such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.